Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about tinted sunscreens. I'm going to give you my recommendations in order of pricing. All right, so let's start with the first one. Whoops. This one is really cool. It actually, when you see it initially, it's like white in color. And then as you blend it in, it kind of blends into your color. I'm going to butcher this. Instant Photo Air Photona H-Less Ultra Light Emulsion Broad Spectrum SPF 50. Yes. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Swati Cannon. I'm a board certified dermatologist out here in California. I thought that I had made a video on sunscreens a long time ago, but apparently I had just hallucinated that. And so here is my video on tinted sunscreens and it is long overdue. For most patients, I do recommend tinted sunscreens over untinted sunscreens. And that is because tinted sunscreens do have an extra ingredient in them that gives the tint. It's called iron oxide. Iron oxide helps to protect your skin against the blue light or the indoor light. This is especially important in patients who have melasma or in patients who have skin discoloration as these issues can be worsened by the blue light. The other issue with untinted sunscreens is that they do leave a white cast for most people. And that's because the zinc oxide and the titanium dioxide, which are the mineral physical filters, they just don't rub into your skin as easily. And so that's why back in the day, you would see like white noses because people, well, people only applied it on zinc oxide onto their noses. It tends to leave a white cast. So tinted sunscreens do help minimize that. And the other reason <laughs> I like tinted sunscreens is because it kind of acts like a foundation for a lot of people. So for example, in my case, case I use tinted sunscreen and that's really my makeup that's my foundation I don't have to use an extra foundation on top and so if you can do that you can really minimize that one extra step in your routine before we start let's remember what the proper amount to apply is so the proper amount of sunscreen is usually a quarter sized amount to the entire face and neck which is quite a lot the other way is you need to apply sunscreen on two finger lengths and that goes over your entire face and as you will see when I apply all of these different sunscreens for you you will notice that that's quite a lot and you really have to rub them in. By the way, when I was making this video, you know, I was trying on all the sunscreens that I'm about to recommend and I didn't, I don't know, I didn't think to do them on set, like to apply the sunscreen on separate days. So for all of you, I basically put on sunscreen, rubbed it off, put another one on, rubbed it off, and now I probably irritated the crap out of my skin. So you're welcome. Because we have to use, you know, so much sunscreen to get that proper SPF, I do recommend the sunscreens that are more lightly tinted versus the more heavily tinted sunscreen. That way you can use as much as you need to get the proper SPF protection. I feel like when it's too heavily tinted, you're just gonna use a little bit and that SPF protection is not going to be as effective. All right, so let's start with the first one. Whoops. I have everything on my table here. So this is the first one. It's the Dermatology Sunscreen. And this is the Universal Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46. It protects, glows, and prevents according to this bottle. So <laughs> this one is about $28. And I think that's a really good price point for what this sunscreen is. This one contains zinc oxide about 12% and another ingredient called octanoxate 7.5%. Octanoxate is a chemical sunscreen. So this one contains chemical and physical sunscreen. It's oil-free, it's water resistant. So when I applied this sunscreen onto my darker skin tone, I really have to rub it in. Initially, I look like a pale gray ghost, but then once I rub it in and I let it settle down, it blends in. It is very hydrating. I have very dry skin, so I feel like it really hydrates my skin. But if you have oily skin, this might be way too oily for you. The next one on my list is actually, let me get this, is the Avain sunscreen. This one is a SPF 50 and it's a compact, which I really love. I use this when I travel. I take it with me. I put it in my purse. That way I can reapply much more easily. This is usually about medium coverage, so it acts more like my makeup. It's affordable at $36 and it lasts about three months. It comes in two shades, beige and honey. Beige is what I use on my skin tone. I think for anybody who's very fair skinned, the shade might be too dark for them. And if you are very dark skinned, the honey might be too light for you. So I think this one is good for the shades of brown in between. It's pretty non-greasy, which I really like. It finishes like a, like a powder. And it contains both titanium oxide and zinc oxide. And it also also has vitamin E to help protect and hydrate. And as you can see when I apply it on, and all of these sunscreens do appear a little gray on me. I think I'm a more neutral skin tone. Some of these sunscreens have a more cooler undertone to them. So initially they all look gray and then they, you know, it mixes in with your uh, skin oils and that color becomes a lot better. Third sunscreen is the Super Goop Matte Sunscreen. This one I have been, you know, using for years. I got it, I was initially introduced to it by actually a patient 
back in like 2015. This patient was really much more woke than me. She recommended it to me and I used it for a very long time until probably the last one or two years. You know, there's a newer version of this that's like a glow version. This one's a more matte version. I think one of the more common complaints I get from patients that it, the sunscreen is just a little too oily or a little too, a little too dewy maybe. And so this one's really good for patients who want that matte look. This one is SPF 40. And like I said, it leaves a super matte finish. It does glide on pretty easily and it's about $38. It probably lasts four to five months. So I think it's a really great price point. And it contains both the mineral filters, the zinc oxide and the titanium dioxide, as well as antioxidants that they identify as a bamboo extract. I think for most patients, this color should be pretty good. It should work for a lot of different shades of brown. It might just be a little too dark for the ultra fair skin and a little too light for the darker skinned. There is another sunscreen also that has a really nice matte finish. It's called Coats, C-O-T-Z. I used to use it a long time ago, like back over like 10 years ago and I don't have it anymore to show you guys but it is another one that has a good matte finish. The fourth sunscreen is the Elta MD UV Clear Facial Sunscreen. So this one is actually the untinted version that I have but they do have a tinted version of this as well and I recommend the tinted version to patients who have acne prone or very sensitive skin. This one contains niacinamide so that's why it's really good for acne and rosacea skin patients. I used to use this actually again 10 years ago and I still recommend it. I just don't use it anymore because I I have found products that I like a little bit better. This one is SPF 46. It contains zinc oxide 9% and the chemical sunscreen ingredient called oxy octanoxate. It is a super tongue twister. All of these ingredients are tongue twisters, but that's probably because of the chemical sunscreen and it's probably why it glides on so easily. I do think that it leaves kind of a dewy finish. And since I don't have this in a tinted version, I didn't show application of it, but it probably does leave a slightly dewy finish. And if you do have oily skin, you may not like it, but I will recommend a way to remove that oily sheen at the end of this video so continue watching and i forgot to mention this cost about 41 dollars which is a lot more than 10 years ago. Inflation's a real thing. The next one on the list is one of my favorites and it's actually one that I have on right now. It is the Color Science Flex Face Shield. This one is really cool. It actually, when you see it initially, it's like white in color. And then as you blend it in, it kind of blends into your color. The downside is that you really have to blend. Like it takes a lot of blending because you have to you know, use still the two finger lens, which ends up being a lot. This sunscreen is definitely medium color. Coverage. It really feels like foundation, but after an hour or so, it doesn't feel so thick anymore, but it does take a little bit of time for that sensation of wearing sunscreen to wear off. This one comes in four shades, which is actually really awesome for color matching. So this one is the beige shade and it is a little bit lighter on my skin, especially when I get a tan, but I just, once I blend it in, it kind of blends in and you can't really tell a difference, but it is a little bit lighter for my skin. It also comes in a shade fair, beige, tan, and deep. So if you don't have that perfect shade for you, you can mix two of these shades together or you can just put a little bit of your foundation with the sunscreen to help match it. So this one runs at $45, which again isn't bad because I think for most people it would replace your foundation and it is very long lasting. Like I feel the sunscreen stays on my face for a very long time. Initially, it's a little dewy, but then it gives you the semi-matte glow that you can kind of see in my video. Okay, moving on to the more expensive sunscreens. These are like the luxury sunscreens. And I say that they're expensive because, well, we'll see. So moving on to my new favorite sunscreen is this Elastin sunscreen. This one is SPF 36 and it's called the Elastin Hydro Tint Pro Mineral Broad Spectrum Sunscreen. This is actually what I use on an everyday basis. I use it especially when I'm going to the office and coming back. SPF 36 is a little bit low or I feel like it's a little bit on the lower end. I usually like anything that's above SPF 40 and SPF 50 is a dream come true. But the reason I like this one is because it applies so flawlessly. Flawlessly. It makes my skin look so radiant. Almost everyone that uses the sunscreen just falls in love with it. So the main sunscreen ingredients include titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. So it contains both the sunscreen filters and it contains a crap ton of peptides, which really help with collagen building as well as a lot of antioxidants. So this sunscreen is really a home run, but it comes at a home run price of $60. You know, I think it went up recently because we still sell it in my office for either $51 or $55, but it definitely went up online 
line and inflation again is now, you know, we can definitely see the effects of inflation. The downside about the Elastin sunscreen is that I think it might be a little bit too dark for the very fair skin patient and it might be a little too light for the very dark skin patient. So again, this is one of those sunscreens that's really good for all different shades of brown. If you really like the sunscreen and you want to make it a little bit more your color, just add a little bit of foundation to it. And finally, the last one on this list, one of my other favorites is the Isden sunscreen. So this one is the Isden Photo, uh, I'm going to butcher this, Isden Photo Air Photona H-less Ultra Light Emulsion Broad Spectrum SPF 50. Yes. So this one is water resistant, which I also really like. It has about 10% zinc oxide and it contains a DNA repair enzyme called Aerophotona actinica, long name that we're all going to butcher. But basically it's a DNA repair enzyme and the company claims that the sunscreen not only protects you from DNA damage, that this enzyme also repairs some of the DNA damage. And I did see some of their clinical studies in the beginning and basically it found an improvement in actinic damage or actinic damage is another word for sun damage that's usually pre-cancerous, but it improved that in patients who use the sunscreen twice a day. So I especially recommend this for patients who are more prone to skin cancers because of the DNA repair enzyme. I really love this sunscreen because it's ultra lightweight. It has this sheer application. It leaves you this dewy radiant finish, but not too oily and not too dewy. It contains peptides to help build collagen. It also contains vitamin E, which makes it hydrating. It comes at a whopping price tag of $70, which to be honest, when I initially was going to make this video, I thought it was still $55 because that's what it was about a year ago. So the price has really gone up. And the untinted version, by the way, is what I recommend to men. This is also the sunscreen my husband uses because of how lightweight it is. So finally, what is my trick to make all of these sunscreens less dewy or less oily or less shiny? So after I apply my sunscreen, I do let it set. And then I use the Makeup Forever Ultra High Def Finishing Powder. I have two colors. There's this like a white white one and this is the banana or the slightly yellowish one. For sunscreens that have that more grayish tone to them, I use this yellow one to help set it a little bit better so that it's a, it normalizes the color. And for the rest of the sunscreens that I think fit my color well, I just use this white one. I like this one over this one because this white one, the particles are a lot finer. So I feel like it blurs my skin almost. Whereas this one, the yellow one, the particles are a little bit more coarser and I've to work a lot harder to set it in. So I basically take the powder on my brush and I blot it onto the sunscreen and I keep on doing it until my face is not as shiny. And here you can kind of see the, this is the dermatology sunscreen. So I use the ultra high definition powder on one side and you can see the difference. Like it really mattifies your skin. All right, that is it. That Those are my favorite sunscreens that I really recommend to almost all of my patients. If you guys have tried a sunscreen that you really like, please let me know in comment below. Obviously there's like so many skincare products. It's impossible for me to try and learn about all of them. So if you have anything that I haven't mentioned, let me know. And don't forget to subscribe so that you can stay up to date on how to get that glowing, vibrant skin. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching as always.